Hello and welcome back to the sixth chapter of Lambda Calculus and Types. Today we're finally going to introduce the Lambda Cube and revisit all the systems that we discussed in the last videos. We started with the untyped Lambda Calculus combined with simple types. This system is called the Simply Type Lambda Calculus and is the basis for all other systems. Unfortunately, its computational power is not all too great. It only defines the extended polynomials. Therefore, it has no recursion, but on the other hand, it's very easy to implement. Next up, we got to know Lambda 2, where we added polymorphism. This system added basically a for-all operator for types, and with that, we were able to define primitive recursion. The third system was Lambda weak omega. Here, we added types depending on types, so type abstraction. This system had no additional computational power on its own, but combined with Lambda 2, they became Lambda Omega, which is more powerful than Lambda 2. The fourth and last system was Lambda P, which allowed types depending on terms. This enables us to create more complex types and is useful in functional programming and in logical approaches of these systems. All of these systems, and with them their dependencies, can be combined arbitrarily. They form the so-called Lambda Cube, which you can see here, with the simply type lambda calculus in the bottom left corner, adding lambda 2 when going upwards, lambda p to the right, and lambda weak omega when going to the back. So in total, one gets 2 to the power of 3, so 8 different systems. One can go as high as 2 to the power of 4, which yields 16 systems, by allowing terms depending on terms to be dropped too. But theories without classical lambda abstractions tend to be less useful, which is why they're not usually considered. All systems combined yield the calculus of construction, lambda c, which is in the upper right corner. This system is very powerful while still being strongly normalizing, so all reduction sequences of terms reach a normal form. All constructible programs terminate, and it's the basis of computer-aided proof systems like Agda and Koch. In this video, we're not going to go into detail what the combined systems are or what they can do, but we rather want to give a uniform definition of all systems. For that, we need to dive into the differences between the systems again, namely the dependencies. So let's take a look at all of those dependencies and reduce the information to its bare core. We're going to form pairs of symbols to denote these dependencies like so. The first component will say what is abstracted, and the second component from what we abstracted. We use star to refer to terms and box to talk about types. So Star star stands for terms depending on terms, which is needed for all systems. Box star stands for terms depending on types. Box box represents types depending on types. And lastly, star box stands for types depending on terms. With this, we can formalize the correspondence between systems and their combinations like so. Every system is an extension of the simply type lambda calculus. So every system has the pair star star. The three systems that we analyzed in detail in the last videos all contain their own pairs. Now, all systems that include lambda 2 contain the pair box star. Systems that include lambda p have star box, and systems that include lambda weak omega additionally have box box. And of course, lambda c has every pair. Next up, we discover how to define lambda c, and with that, we will find a uniform definition for all the systems. To get to lambda c, it's easiest to start with lambda p and extend it by lambda 2 and lambda weak omega. This is the case because we're only going to need to add the two ways of abstracting over types. This can be done by simply changing one derivation rule, the formation rule, which makes dependent types possible. Remember that in lambda p, it was important that the a in the first premise is a type, and for x in the abstraction to be a term. Lifting this restriction allows Lifting this restriction allows A to be a kind, and therefore X of kind A to be a type. This gives us abstraction over types. So we switch this star for S to allow both star and box. Now this rule uses S two times. When both are star, we allow term-term dependency. If they're both box, it is type over types. But the two sorts need to be different if we want terms depending on types or types depending on terms. So instead of using just one variable s, we use two, s1 and s2. By inserting the corresponding sort pairs that we introduced a slide earlier, we get exactly the abstractions we need for a specific system. Star star for terms depending on terms, and so on. To make it clear why this works, we're now going to insert the pairs and see what the derivation rules allow. 
For the simply typed lambda calculus, we have a type A and a type B, and conclude that A to B is a type. Remember that the pi type is constant if lambda P is not included. So the formation rule just yields the construction of arrow types with this pair of sorts. For lambda 2, with a pair box star, we have a kind A and a type B. So, for example, sigma for B and star for A. In lambda 2, there were no constructors yet, so star is the only option for A. We then get that the pi type alpha dot sigma is a type. This is exactly the polymorphic type that we introduced in lambda 2. Now for lambda weak omega, we need to achieve types depending on types. A is a kind, and B is a kind as well. And still, the pi types are constant. Now, A might be star, and B might be star to star. So with the rule, we can conclude star to star to star is box. This gives us proper constructors, which are the basis for types depending on types. And lastly, with star box, we immediately have the formation rule for lambda p, and therefore types depending on terms. So to get back to the calculus of construction, we achieve its derivation rules by taking the rules from lambda p and changing the form rule as discussed. And we even get more than these derivation rules. They make it possible to define all systems of the lambda cube uniformly. We just discussed that we can enable the different dependencies by inserting the corresponding sort pair into the formation rule. And this is sufficient to make the derivation rules, as they are displayed here, into derivation rules for each of the systems. This is quite easy to see for lambda p, of course, since we would get exactly its rules by changing the formation rule. For lambda weak omega, it's equally intuitive, as we would just need to remind ourselves that the pi types are constant in weak omega, so we could change them back to the arrows and we'd get exactly the rules of lambda weak omega. For the simply type lambda calculus and lambda 2, it's not quite as easy to see. Although the formation rule doesn't break anything, we have way more rules than we had in the original definition, and the proof that these rules don't give any more constructions is a bit more involved. The main difficulty is, of course, that in those two systems, we had a pre-given set of types, while in the lambda cube, those types are constructed during derivation with the rules sort, weak, and form. And also the conversion rule seems a little redundant, since in lambda 2, and with simple types, the better convertibility just means that the types are syntactically equivalent, and the conclusion of the rule follows then by definition. But in the end, it's not too hard to show that the original systems are actually equivalent to this uniform definition when using the correct sort pairs. As promised, we're now going to give an overview over the properties of the systems we looked at in the last videos, which is not so difficult, as all properties hold for each system. Some just need to be rephrased a little, as the preset environment sometimes changes. The lemmata we looked at are the free variables lemma, which says that free variables always need to be introduced in the context. The thinning lemma, where we can weaken the strength of a judgment, so make it bigger, and still keep all derivations that were possible before. And also the subterm lemma, which states that if a term is typable, each subterm is also typable. And if a type is inhabited, each subtype is inhabited. The next one is a very important property for decision problems, the uniqueness of types lemma. This has to be adapted for all systems where dependent types are admitted. Then we have uniqueness up to better equivalence. The last three were the subject reduction lemma, so if a term m is reducible to a term n, and m has type sigma, so does n. The church russell theorem, which states that one can't get lost when executing a derivation. And lastly, the strong normalization theorem. All systems that we've introduced are strongly normalizing. A few important properties we want to mention are the decidability of type checking, well typedness, and inhabitation. Why this is so important will be covered in the next video, where we're going to look at the logical approach of these systems. Well typedness and type checking are decidable in all systems of the lambda cube. Inhabitation, however, so the task of finding a term to a given type, is only decidable in the simply type lambda calculus and in lambda weak omega. It's undecidable in all systems containing lambda 2, lambda p, and especially in the calculus of construction. The lambda cube is a framework that brings together the basic lambda calculi and their combinations. The simply type lambda calculus is the basis for all systems, and all systems are contained in lambda c. Each system inhabits different type term dependencies, and we can formalize and display the lambda cube using these dependencies. We can describe every system and each combination with a uniform definition of the derivation rules with just one rule to change accordingly to the systems contained, the formation rule. Which dependency is possible to be derived is uniquely determined by a pair of sorts S1 and S2. 
The most powerful system, Lambda C, allows all sort pairs and has all the nice properties defined for its subsystems, sometimes in a rephrased version to fit the system. Along those are the church roster theorem and the uniqueness of types lemma, up to conversion of the types, of course. This system plays a big role in computer-aided proofs and proof checkers. For that approach, the notion of proposition as types is needed, which we're going to look at in the next and last video. The typed and untyped lambda calculi are more or less easy and simple to define. They have some very nice properties when it comes to type checking and mathematical behavior, and they are the base for functional programming. All in all, it's a pretty amazing system. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time in the last video.